happening. <laughs> okay, so we're official now. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, yeah, Patricia. Yeah, my quizzes are, are probably all going to be made by Connect because Connect has all these okay. samples. So I, I'm really lucky because all that, you know, nitty gritty in a job is, is all going to be done by that. But um, I am a firm believer in uh, culture because I teach an Italian course uh, and I like to show the students and things on YouTube and everything. So I might be making like my own little quizzes and uh, they're probably not going to be a multiple choice. So they're probably going to be graded manually. And I'm wondering, how do I do that? Do I send them as an email? Do I, how do I set it up? Uh, you can you could approach that in, in a number of ways. If you want students to turn in like short answer questions. Yeah. I know a lot of faculty do that as a Moodle assignment rather than a quiz. Okay. You can also do short answer questions on a quiz. And the advantage of that is that you have some more controls about when the quiz opens, when it closes, um, you know, how long the students have to work on it. You've got some quiz settings that control access that you don't really have access to if you did it as an assignment activity. The other thing that Go ahead. I can put two points per question. These are going to yeah, be easy right. culture questions yeah. so with, a, with a short answer and make it like 40 points. Yeah. Uh, and then give maybe five during the course of the semester. I can do that. Yep. And, and send them into the grading book. Yep, um, the, the Moodle quizzes or the Moodle assignments, if you do that way, uh, uh, when you make them a graded activity, they will automatically go into the Moodle gradebook. Okay. Now, I, I have talked with faculty in the past who have done kind of short answer questions, and I've said, well, you know, you could do this as an assignment, and, yeah. but they say, no, I want to do it as a quiz because... It sounds... It, uh... Well, it, it sounds like a quiz rather than an assignment. But also, if you had students turn in, like, like say you had five questions in a, in a Moodle assignment, and you had them turn it in as, like, a, you, they write it up in Word and they turn it in, you tend to focus on one student at a time and read all five questions. Okay. Whereas if you set them up as short answer questions in your Moodle quiz, it's easier to focus on, okay, I'm going to look at all the, I'm gonna look at all the qu uh, question one short answers. So I'm consistent in how I'm grading them. And then I'm going to look at, you know, quiz, uh, question two short answers. So they're... It's faster, probably. Yeah, yeah. It's faster to look at like that. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So, so I have a question. Yeah, Tina. This is Tina. Hi. Uh, I usually oh. have multiple choice questions. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. And, and uh, Alina, I'm, I'm and you, uh, so. and uh, uh, short answers. This are the kind of, and numerical. All these things are in there. Yep. How do I use this quiz activity to mix everything? Yeah. What do you mean by mix? Okay. Well, like I was doing the homework that you asked us to do, <laughs> the aching, whatever. Yeah. This is uh, just for uh, just multiple for choice. Multiple choice. Okay. So, so we will, before I thought we... you were going to put that in a, te uh, uh, what's that called? Test bank? Yeah. Uh, so. And uh, how do you have all these different types of questions in there? So we'll look at how you can look at the whole range of questions you can write in Moodle. And we'll look at actually writing them in Moodle first. The reason I sent out the thing about the Aiken format is I know a lot of faculty do do multiple choice questions. And a lot of faculty already have their multiple choice questions up in a Word document mm -hmm. because they have printed it out to, you know, to use in class or whatever. So the Aiken format, as we'll talk about later, gives you a very easy way to get those questions from your Word document into Moodle. But you can do all sorts of questions types in Moodle, and we'll look at that. Uh, Alina? Hi, um, I'm a new uh, faculty hire here, yep. um, and I'm not entirely new to Moodle, but I'm definitely new to this Moodle. Um, so I worked with Moodle uh, with a different Moodle at a different university before. 
Um, I'm not sure that the quizzes is, uh, it might be assignments that I'm interested in. I'm teaching um, several um, uh, studio courses. However, my students will have to do readings. And in order to keep track that they are staying on top of their readings, I want to include right. um, some kind of activity that, you know, tracks that. Yeah. And that's, that's the way I use the Moodle quiz activity most is um, reading readiness, reading uh, assurance kinds of activities. And so, um, yeah, I will set up basically low stakes quiz um, examples and give students multiple ch ch chances on it. And these are all things we can go over when we go through the nuts and bolts of, you know, how you would actually set this up in, in Moodle. Uh, uh, Amani, um, do you have yeah. a question? Yes, hi. Hi. Um, I teach um, Black American drama, and the quizzes are very important to the course. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information. I have them. They are a combination of short answer, true and false, um, listings, and um, multiple choice. Yep. But they are high stake. What I, you know, they count greatly for the grades and it's about four of them that are done over the course of the semester right so i mean there are different approaches uh for how you can think about security for you know a high stakes exam kind of format using the quiz activity um there are some things that you can do within moodle uh, that we'll talk about we also do have uh, Respondus Lockdown Browser, which we won't be talking about today, but you could, you could require students to take the quiz within the Lockdown Browser environment that will provide some additional security. Ah, okay. okay. And I, how do I find out about, well, you, you well, how to find out about yeah, there'll there'll be other workshops on that, or um, you know, um, Marie's on the call as well. Uh, she does the Moodle office hours twice uh, a week, um, okay. Monday and Thursday afternoon from two to four, and okay. you know, notices will go out about that. So, um, uh, I guess Narek, maybe if you've got one last thing before. Um, Oh, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Keith, uh, for organizing this workshop. So I'm more mostly interested in the grading uh, part of the quizzes. I haven't. Uh, I started. Um, I started creating questions in the question bank, uh, different kind of short answers, multiple choice questions in uh, uh, with mathematical with math expressions, but I haven't done it. You know, I haven't um, explored that fact about grading. Uh, then uh, another thing that can I give, how can I give overrides, like time-wise for students who uh, right. need more time so to do the quiz? We'll, uh, oh. we'll, we'll definitely talk about doing overrides to do, um, and you know. Also, and also, um, one last thing that is it possible to um, collect kind of statistics on which particular question yes. students and get wrong? And we'll, we'll look. We'll look at that as well. So uh, maybe let me go ahead and start sharing my screen so we can um, jump in and take a look at some of these things. So um, let me just very quickly show you what the student experience would be like for doing just a basic multiple choice um, question. Um, so if the student clicks on the quiz activity, they'll go in, they'll get some basic information about, uh, you know, how many attempts, when does the quiz open, when does it close, um, you know, how much time all of that stuff. They click uh, attempt the quiz now. You, because it's a timed quiz, Moodle's gonna give them this, uh, you know, you need to be ready to go because you're gonna have to finish up in 30 minutes. And then they would see the, um, the quiz displayed. Now in this, in this particular case, I've set up the quiz with multiple sections. If people are interested in that, we can talk mm -hmm. about how to do that as well. There is this navigation as uh, students, you know, click through. And again, these are going to be most, I think, 
these are just I, I put in some random multiple choice questions for this you know dummy ex, um, quiz uh, with uh, you know six questions per page here they go to the next page you can see that um, Moodle will tell them what questions they've applied an answer to what questions they haven't and so if I go through this section and don't necessarily answer every question as a student. Um, and Moodle will tell me, okay, I'm on section three here, but oh, don't forget, you've got these questions that you haven't answered yet. And so here's a short answer question, um, et cetera. Here's a true false, I'll say true, um, et cetera. And, um, you know, uh, there is a, a process where students actually have to tell Moodle that um, I'm getting ready to finish up this attempt. Moodle will give them a summary. Okay, you've submitted, you've submitted provisional answers for these questions corresponding to what's showing up in the navigation over here. Uh, you've got some questions that you don't have answered yet. Do you want to return to the attempt? You know, you've got 28 minutes left. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to just go ahead and submit all of these answers and finish? And uh, I've got three more chances at this, so I'm just going to submit all three and finish. Um, Moodle is really kind of, are you sure you want to do this? Because you don't have all the questions answered. And then um, students will get immediate feedback on the, the objective questions. I'm not a very good guesser uh, when I'm just clicking through, apparently. Um, depending on what uh settings you've set the student will see which questions they got right or wrong um and um their right or wrong answers there's got to be a right answer somewhere uh, i have to go to section two to find a right answer mm -hmm. um so here's here's the right answer and so um you know, since as the instructor, I've set up multiple attempts on this, I'm not actually going to tell the student. Well, actually, because I set this up quickly, I left it as the default where the student gets the correct answer uh, given to them. If you're going to do multiple attempts on the quiz, obviously, you don't want to necessarily give them what the right answer is. You want to let them know what questions they got right or wrong and and basically allow them chance to more study, um, chance to study more and, um, you know, take the quiz again in my case, because I'm doing this as a kind of a low stakes formative assessment activity. Clearly, if this were a high stakes uh, summative exam situation, you'd probably set it up with one attempt and all the other kinds of security um, that you would want to to do with that. So um, that's what it's kind of like uh, for the student taking your, your quizzes. You can see most of that by using the preview function when you're in editing the quizzes, and we'll take a look at that. I won't take the time um, to actually um, um, Go to all of these help documents uh, at the Moodle.org site, but uh, there is a page that talks about effective quiz strategies, including some of the things you can do within Moodle, um, just to make sure that you have, um, you encourage students to not cheat uh, by doing things like um, multiple variations on a quiz and random selection of quizzes from uh, quiz questions from pools and so forth. Also some creative uses for quizzes beyond just, you know, high stakes summative um, exam, uh, exams at the end of the course. This quiz activity is kind of your main landing page for all of the uh, documentation about quizzes. Uh, let me just quickly go to the question types page though uh, although we'll see this in our Moodle as well these are all the different kinds of uh, question types that are standard in our Moodle 3.6 environment uh, 
And above and beyond that, we've added some additional ones as well that we'll see. And so if you wanted you know, more detail about how, how an essay question would, be, would work in Moodle, you can come here, click on essay, or you can click on matching or multiple choice. Uh, I will say one thing, this quiz quick guide kind of walks you through the process step by step. It does not exactly follow the workflow that I use personally and that I encourage uh, or recommend to faculty. Um, it talks about, you know, well, you add a quiz activity and then you set the settings on it and then you want to create and add questions. I, personally, I find it much more uh, useful to create and organize my questions first. So I want to spend some time looking at the question bank and, and different ways of getting questions into Moodle. And then we'll stop here and provide an opportunity for you to all get into your courses and do a little bit of question creation. Then I add a quiz activity, put all the settings on that I want, um, and then um, determine how I'm going to add the questions, whether I'm going to add specific questions or random questions. There was a question about how to adjust the point value, so we'll talk about that. Uh, how do you control layout? Um, um, I like that idea, that the option of being able to set up different sections on the quiz, so we'll take time to look at that. And then uh, quiz accommodations. If there's time, I'll pull up some of the reports uh, from quizzes in my uh, past, in some of my past courses. You know, there's really not much to see in a quiz report on the quiz until after your students have taken it. So um, that's why I might refer back to some of my past semester uh, courses. Okay. So, um, in terms of creating and organizing questions, um, well, we're, I'll work mostly in my uh, sandbox course here for actually doing um, the work, but. Um, let me just go. Um, I'm pretty compulsive about organizing things, and so if you look in, if you're looking at your course and you look in the administration block under question bank, there are options for setting up categories, for creating questions in Moodle, and for importing questions, and. Um, I didn't have time to set up my Aiken formula, format document either, so I'll go through that process uh, in the workshop here. Let me just show you uh, from one of my real courses. So here's my Search for Life in the Universe course that I did a few summers back and that I will be doing again this fall as an online course. If, um, if I'm you know, out in the main page for the course, and uh, go to administration and to question bank and look under categories. You can see that, uh, well, I've got my course organized around three main units. Um, what do we know about life on Earth? Uh, how are we searching for life in the solar system? How are we searching for life um, beyond the solar system? And within each of those units, I've got a series of topics that we're covering. And so I have actually uh, set up um, grade uh, question categories for each of those topics and organized them into these modules. Um, by doing this, rather than just having a big uh, collection of questions in your question bank, I can create a quiz um, finding and characterizing extrasolar planets that will randomly draw eight or ten questions from these 23 questions. And that's, that's why I'm comfortable giving my students four or five times on these low stakes formative um, assessments, you know, giving them four or five chances at the quiz. Because I'm, I'm just mainly concerned, are they doing the reading? 
Are they, are they going to the websites that I'm referring them to? Are they watching the web video? And these low stakes quiz questions are just a way to make sure that they are engaging with that material. If they use up all five times uh, that they've got a chance to take the quiz that I've set up, um, that's a win for as far as I'm concerned because it just means they're spending more time on task, which is a is an uh, important principle for you know encouraging their learning. Uh, so by having um, questions organized into these um, categories, you can do that. And under the uh, categories option, you can just create a new cat uh, category and you can put it wherever you want. So maybe I want to create a category under this category. You know, select where this subcategory is going to be, give it a name, and click add category. And now I've got a new bucket that I can put questions into, whether I'm writing them in Moodle or whether I am uh, uploading them. So um, let me go back into my sandbox course. Again, if we look at administration, categories, um, I can create a new category here. Um, that will be, I'll just call it workshop example again. And click add category. And there is that empty, empty category. Okay, so once you've decided how you want to organize your question bank, the qu next question is obviously, how do I get my questions into the question bank? And the first thing I'm going to talk about is writing them in Moodle. Then we'll quickly talk about importing, and then we'll take a little bit of a break to give those who want to go into your Moodle course and just go in and um, you know, write a question in Moodle just so that you've had that experience uh, can do so. Uh, so um, again, if I were back in my sandbox course here, if I go ad to course administration, question bank, if I select the questions option, I will be able to see the questions that are already in the question bank. Um, I can, here I'm looking at the default bucket for the whole course. Uh, because I have checked this also show questions from subcategories, all of the questions are showing up that I've got in the course. If I unselect that option, I will see that I only have, um, you know, a, um, a, a handful of questions, and none of them are actually real questions at the top level. But if I wanted to go into my measuring geological time category, I would see that I've got, you know, all of these questions. Most of them are multiple choice questions because they have this little multiple choice uh, symbol, and if you hover over that, you'll see that it says multiple choice. Uh, in fact, all of them are that. So let me uh, go back up to the top, click on the option to show questions, and you can see that um, here is a uh, an essay question and an, an open-ended question. Here are some non-question questions. Here, down at the bottom, below the multiple choice questions, here is a short answer, fill in the blank question, and here is a true/false question. So, as you create different types of questions, they will show up in your in your question bank with. Um, with an indicator as to what they are. You can go back and delete any of the questions that are in your question bank. You can clone or duplicate questions. You can go in to edit the question. You can preview to see what a question would look like. So what is this multiple choice question gonna look like? Well, it's going to look like this. 
uh, Moodle is going to give the question text, and it's going to give the um, the uh, possible answers that I've uh, entered in. I can um, you know select and save and uh, uh, show the uh, correct response. You can start again, see what it looks like. You can see if I if I click start again, uh, they're an example of cross-cutting relationship. If I save and start again, you can see that um, the answers, Moodle will by default shuffle the uh, order of the answers. So you don't have to worry about uh, do I have too many right answers as uh, option number C when you're writing the question because Moodle will, will display them in all different um, uh, or, um, um, orders. Uh, here's how a uh, short answer question would look. Here is how a true false question would look. And so forth. Uh, here's how a an essay question would look. Okay. So you the students get a, a you know a full Moodle text editor to write out the answers to their to their questions. So um, if I were in this workshop example category that is now empty, I could click create a new question. And again, I have all of these different question types to, um, to use. If I wanted to write an essay, I could select that, click add, um, you know, water on Mars. Describe what you know about the history of uh, water on Mars. A really bad essay question. And uh, what's the default point going to be for this? I'm going to give it maybe 10. I can give general feedback, um, but I can also um, you know, I can have control over the editor that the students are going to use. And if I click uh, save the changes, then I have added this essay question. If I want to create a multiple choice question, um, You know, what direction is sunrise? And then, um, you know, maybe I leave the default uh, be to be one point there. I can give some general feedback. I want one correct answer um, only and uh, shuffle the choices. And so I could say, um, north and give no credit for north and I could say south and give no credit for south. I could say east and give a hundred percent for east and I could say west and give no credit and I could give specific feedback on each of those uh, right and wrong answers. Yep. Yes. Um, or, um, you know, maybe north and south aren't quite as incorrect in my mind as west. So um, I'm going to give them each 20%. So if you're editing the questions in Moodle, you have lots of options. Uh, you have lots of flexibility. You have lots of control. You can provide lots of different feedback. You can provide feedback for any correct answer, any partially correct answer, any incorrect answer. Um, you can, and we won't get into this, do an adaptive testing approach where you actually let the student 
make multiple attempts at the question within an exam, within a quiz session. And clearly, if they don't get it right the first time, you want to be able to dock them by having to have guessed twice. Um, so lots of, I guess, main point I'm wanting to make here is that there are lots of options if you're writing your um, questions in Moodle. You've got all of these different question types you can use. Don't think we have any music theory faculty on uh, the call today, but we specifically added this music theory question type to provide lots of different, um, actually lots of different types of questions around uh, music theory. You can have ordering questions, you can have uh, drag and drop um, onto an image. So you could set up a, a background image, you could have some hot spots defined on that image, and you could drag and drop uh, labels, for example, if you're talking about some metabolic pathway and you've got um, the basis of the um, pathway as, a, as an image and you want students to label it, you can do drag and drop. You can do matching. All of these different kinds of, of questions. Um, so writing your questions in Moodle gives you lots of power, lots of flexibility, gives you lots of opportunities to provide feedback to your students, but on the same time, it can take, uh, it can be a lot of work and be, and be time consuming. So for my purposes when I'm just using multiple choice questions um, for kind of low stakes reading uh, assignment, I will actually write those questions outside of Moodle and import them. And so let me just show you that process for multiple choice. Um, you can just go ahead and select the Aiken format. If you get if you're not sure which format is which, you can click on the little question mark. And uh, this is a simple format for doing multiple choice questions. If you click on more help, you'll get this. Um, you know, this is basically what your question file has to look like. And since I didn't take the time to put together a Word document ahead of time, I'm just gonna copy these questions. And let me open up Word. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say this is a plain text file, so I can just go ahead and do a regular paste in here. But uh, just to be compulsive, I'm going to do paste special and just do clean, unformatted text. So basically, you've got a question on one line. It could go more than one line, but you know, no line breaks. And then here are the answers, potential answers, and you have answer, colon, and then whatever the correct answer is. So if I wanted to do that sunrise question, what direction is uh, sunrise? I could do A, north, B, south, C, east, and D, west. And then I would just do answer, all uppercase with a colon, and tell what the right answer is, C, and hit return. And then the tricky part here is that you have to save this as a plain text file, not rich text, not Word document, not uh, PDF. So in Word, if I go save as and do um, question, uh, question bank and select the actual TXT format. For those of you who are Mac users and you're using the Mac version of Word, you have to select not the Mac OS text encoding, but the MS-DOS text encoding. If you're working in Word on Windows, you just select save as a text file and then um, click OK. And 
I forget where I saved that to, so let me just make sure I saved it out onto the onto the desktop. Same thing. And now, um, so I mean, you could have a Word document where you've got your 30 questions all written, and all you have to do is go through and enter in what the answers are, save it as a text document, and then um, you close this down. I will select the Aiken format, and under general here, I want that those questions to be imported into this category that I set up for the workshop. And I can drag and drop the file or choose it. Oh, I've got too many windows. Let's just go drag and drop. Uh, let's just go choose it. Choose it from the desktop here. And click upload. Um, so I'm uploading a multiple choice question bank. Basically, I'm dumping it into this category I've already set up. And I click import. And it tells me it's imported these three questions. Steve, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so you did it you did it so that the questions were automatically imported into that particular category you previously constructed, correct? Yep. Okay. Um so that's useful to know in terms of organizing your questions. You want to right. have that category set up in advance so that you can directly import the questions into that category. Yeah, so I, I look ahead and see, well, what, what are the quizzes I'm going to set up? You know, how, do, how are they organized into topics and so forth? I'll set up my categories in the question bank to mirror what I'm going to do for the quizzes. Makes sense, because if you don't pick that category, it's just going to go into the general question bank and it'll all be mixed together. Yeah, it'll be all at the top level. Now, you can move them later, but it's a hassle to have to move them later. Right. And just one other quick thing. So also, you have to type the answer below the question, right? When you right. Work, you have to do that. You, and an answer's got to be in capitals and then colon and then a space and then you say yeah. C, D, or E or whatever. Yeah, if you, if you, you know, go to import like, uh, like it was at mm -hmm. and um, so again, go to question bank import if I didn't quite get it. You know, if uh, all you have to do is remember multiple choice, Aiken is an easy format for that. Click on the question mark, click on the more help. Just follow the model that, uh, that they've got there. Now, this is only good for multiple choice questions. You can, you might be interested in the gift format import most faculty I talk with aren't, but uh, this does multiple choice, true, false, short answer, essay, all of these different formats. It is does require you to use some markup codes when you're typing up your questions in Word. And I won't go through all of these in, in detail, but if, if we just look here uh, at... Um, Uh, some of these quick examples. So, you know, if you've got a statement and then you have either a true or a false in these curly brackets, uh, this will be interpreted as add a true false question to the question bank. Uh, here's how a multiple choice question would look like. What's the question? And then the potential answers are in the curly brackets. And the answer that has an equal sign is correct, and the answer that has uh, tilde um, is wrong. And um, you can add um, you can add you know feedback on the right and wrong answers if you want to do fill in the blank and so forth. So you know if um, if you're um, comfortable. You know, putting little markup uh, codes into your Word documents as you're typing, which uh, I know faculty in a number of disciplines are. This can be a very fast way to write your questions in Moodle and do the import. 
or you can just go into Moodle and say, okay, I wanna, I wanna create a matching question, so I'll select a matching question and they'll just write it from scratch in the Moodle um, environment. Okay, um, well maybe we won't take the time to do hands-on practice because uh, I've got some other things I want to, to cover. Uh, but I think we can, we can pretty much do these these sections in in a timely fashion. So I have um, I have all these different questions in my question bank. Now let's say I want to add a an actual quiz activity. Think of it this way: the quiz activity is your container. The questions are what you put in the question bank, and then once you've set up the properties of the container, which would be, and we'll go through these, when is it open? When does it close? How long do students have? How many attempts do they have? Once you set up the properties of the quiz itself, then you can put the questions on the quiz and you're all set to go. So I will select a quiz activity, uh, click add, uh, give it a name, workshop example quiz. Um, description is not required, but here's where I would say, remember this is over chapter 13. And whatever else uh, is gonna be covered. Uh, let me actually just uh, expand all of the categories of settings here so we can go through them. Uh, by default, uh, Quizzes are just open, but if you want to specify when the quiz opens and closes, which is a, typically a good idea, um, you know, we want it to open two days ago and be open through um, whatever the 26th is, you can specify a time limit. You know, if this is a 10 question multiple choice quiz, I might give the students 20 minutes, which is more than enough time. You know, if I look at the if I look at the logs on uh, how long students would normally take to to a ten minute multiple choice, you know, low stakes formative qu uh, quiz, they're oftentimes four minutes, five minutes, you know, seven minutes. So twenty minutes is um, is very long. Um, the default. We've set the default to be that open attempts are submitted automatically. So if at the end of 20 minutes, I'm a student who is you know, taking too long and I haven't actually gotten around to click the finish up and submit my quiz attempt, if there are any, if there are any open attempts at the end of that 20 minute time period, they're automatically submitted. So students don't lose their work if they forget or if they don't get around to clicking on the submit button. Um, you know, uh, grading, um, stick this into the quizzes, stick the grade on this quiz into the quizzes uh, category in the grade book. Moodle's default is to allow students to have unlimited attempts because Moodle is all about formative assessment, providing learning opportunities and so forth. If you're doing a high stakes exam, obviously you probably wanna set that to one. Um, if you're doing a low stakes reading readiness kind of assessment like I do typically, I'll give students five attempts at it. And then if you have multiple attempts, do you want to give them the average grade? I don't know why you would give them their first attempt because typically that's probably gonna be their worst. Uh, you can select last attempt. You know, so if they did, they got a five out of 10 and then a six out of 10 and then they got an eight out of 10 and they decided to do it again and they got a seven out of 10, they would get the seven out of 10. Um, the default is the highest grade. I typically give, you know, give them their best work. Um, by default, Moodle will uh, create a new page every 10 questions. You can do a new page every question, which I find uh, really annoying. Um, but you, know, you might want students just to focus on one question at a time and then have to go to a new page to see. I'm actually gonna select uh, never all questions on one page because I wanna show some layout options in the, um, when we're actually setting up the quiz. Uh, the default is to shuffle answers within questions. 
and uh, the default is uh, deferred feedback. And unless you're doing some kind of adaptive um, testing approach, you probably want to leave that as default uh, as deferred feedback. What this means is students see the 10 multiple choice questions, they answer, they select answers for them, they hit submit, and that's their attempt. Um, they get the feedback once they have submitted their their attempt. Now, in my case, they've got four more attempts. They can come back in and do it again. But each time, they've got to select all their answers and hit submit. If you wanted to do the adaptive mode, basically, students would be able to select an answer and do a trial submission while the quiz is still open and get a yes or no. Yes, you got it correct or no, you didn't. And if they got it incorrect, they'd be able to do a second chance at it. And, um, you know, assuming you've, you've uh, left some um, points taken off for missing it the first time around, um, you know, it still is to their advantage to get it right the first time. But uh, deferred feedback is how most of us will probably want to have our Moodle questions behave. If you are doing multiple um, attempts, as I talked about before, you probably don't want to tell students what the right answer is when they do their first attempt and still have four more attempts ready to go. You might want not want to tell what the right answer is until the quiz is completely closed down and they have done their two or three or five attempts and ev everyone else in the class has done all the attempts as well. But in general, it's good to give them some feedback if you are letting them do multiple uh, attempts that to, so that they can know, well, okay, what actually were the um, answers I selected? Were those correct or not? Um, and the feedback. Um, anything else here? Um, I, I think that's good enough for now. And if we do that and I click save and display, I have created a quiz activity, but as Moodle helpfully tells me, I haven't added any questions yet. So there is an edit quiz button here when there are no questions on the quiz. Edit quiz is also here under administration. If I wanted to go back and change, maybe I wanted to give them six attempts rather than five. I would go back and edit the settings on the quiz activity. But if I want to edit the questions that are on the quiz, I would, quick, I would click edit quiz. And that brings me to this page where um, it's not real obvious, but here is a little pull-down menu that allows you to um, add the questions. And so I can add questions from the question bank. So maybe I will go into this measuring geological time and I will select this question and this question and maybe some of these questions. And you know, I can go through here and figure out what, what specific questions I want to add. And if I click add selected questions to the quiz here, they show up as specific named question. So every time a student takes this quiz, they will see this question and this question and this question and this question. Um, they um, and in and in that order because this is how they're they're paged. If you instead want to add a random question, you can select the category that you want to pull the random questions from. So maybe I'll go to the what is life category and I will pull, I've got 14 questions in there, so I will pull 10 random questions from that category and I click add those. You can see they show up differently. They just show here's a random question that you're going to get a different question pulled from this what is life category each time a student comes to take the quiz.
Okay. So these are defined questions on the quiz. These are uh, random ones. And you could, if you really wanted to, create your quiz activity first and then actually write your questions from the quiz. Um, again, I prefer to have my questions available and set ahead of time. But if you know there is some question you want to add, add, you can do that. And I will actually show you that in just a minute. So, um, let's. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Um, so, in my experimenting with writing questions, I encountered something called a grade boundary, which I haven't seen in what you were showing us. Ah, what question type was that? I think it might have been a matching question. I was doing a map and trying to match, you know, places on the map A, B, C to numbers one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, some of the questions will have, uh, will accept a range of answers. So, uh, you know, maybe, um, why don't you email me that specific question and uh, I can take a look at your specific question uh, or, or if there's time, we can, we can pull it up uh, by having you share your screen. Okay. So, I'm going to add one more defined question here and then... Um, I set this up so that all the questions are on one page. I can add page breaks wherever I want to by clicking on this little add a page break. So maybe I want, maybe I want a section of defined questions. I want a section of randomized questions. And maybe I want a, um, a third page that has the essay question. So this will show up as three separate pages, but it won't actually show up as that in the um, in the navigation. So if I go to preview the quiz here and start it, you'll see that there is no um, there's nothing in the navigation to show that there are different pages here. So I'm going to go back again to edit the quiz. And um, one of the things you can add once you have multiple pages is you can add a new section heading. And you can add a section heading for each of the pages you've defined. And you can um, put in uh, you know, names for those um, section headings. And I'm compulsive enough, I need an S there. And same thing for the So now when I preview the quiz and start it uh, the navigation is much more specific, and I can see that there are these different sections. If I click here on any of these unanswered questions in this section, I'll be taken to that section of the quiz. The other thing you can do if you've done that is to add a non-question question at the top. So if I add a new question, this is Probably the only reason why I would add questions on the fly would be to add a description question. And in this, you know, um, directions for section one, here's, these are defined questions. I want you to answer them, whatever. And click save changes. And now there is a um, a non-question directions question. If it's at the bottom of the list, of course, which doesn't make much sense. So I need to drag and drop it up to the top here. And you know, you can imagine doing the same thing for these other sections as well. Then, when I preview the quiz, um, the the top question here is uh, your information for this section. Now there were 
two things that came up in our discussion at the beginning that uh, we can finish off with. Uh, by default, these imported multiple choice questions all come in with a, multiple, uh, with a default point value of one. If I really think that um, this multiple choice question is twice as important as the other ones, I can give it a value of two. Um, or if I have reconsidered and I think the essay question is, you know, more than the 10 points that I had allocated it when I wrote the question, uh, maybe uh, for this quiz and only for this quiz, I can change the point value to 20. And then um, I want, um, there are 40 actual points on the quiz, but maybe I want the quiz to count as a, a 50 point exam. I can give a maximum grade of 50 and click save. And if the student gets all the questions right, uh, that is they get 40 out of 40 question points, Moodle will give them a score of 50. If they got 20 points out of the 40, Moodle would give them a score of 25. Um, so that's, uh, you know, laying out your questions. That is adjusting the point values on individual questions. You can, um, you can specify that you want the question order to be shuffled. That really doesn't matter uh, for the randomly selected questions because they're going to be a different set of questions every time. But if you do shuffle the question order, the students will see these nine defined questions on the first section of the quiz, but they won't be in the same order every time. Uh, okay, and then the last thing um, is um, setting up an override. Again, I'm looking at the quiz. Doesn't matter whether I'm looking, you know, at what, whatever page I'm, I'm in the quiz. I go to uh, administration block and select user overrides, and uh, I can add an override. Uh, the default time for the quiz is 20 minutes. So if um, if um, test lambda has time and a half, then I would set up. 30 minutes for them and save that. And I will get a little um, listing here of all of the individual overrides that I have set up. And I can see that instead of 20 minutes, test lambda gets 30 minutes. Now you cannot do this globally for your, for your class. You have to, uh, for every uh, quiz activity you add to your course, you have to set up the same um, you have to set up an override for test lambda on each one of those, which kind of makes sense because uh, for another quiz, there might not be a time limit, in which case I don't need to set up an override. And for another quiz, the time limit might be 30 minutes. So I would have to give 45 minutes. So, uh, I mean, that's basically, you go into administration, user overrides, gets you to this page where you can see what overrides that have been set up. Maybe for another student, uh, they have some family emergency and you want to give them um, a couple of extra days to have the time to go through and do the exam. You can save the override. So you have different overrides for different students and uh, it will show you what the override is. Um, so <clears throat> those are all, um, you know, how do you, how do you get your questions in? How do you organize them? What are some of the things you want to think about when you're setting up your quiz activity to make sure that the quiz behaves the way you want the quiz to behave? And then once you've got the container, um, you can figure out, am I adding defined questions? Am I adding random questions from a category because I'm having the students do this more than once? Um, and so forth. Me uh, stop there and ask if there are any questions. I have another question. Yeah, Rachel. I'm sorry, I'm asking so many questions. No, it's okay. 
Um, if you have a, a quiz that's largely multiple choice, whatever, and you have a couple of paragraph answers in that quiz, and the student submits, uh, what, uh, how does the grading? Right. So Moodle will be able to grade um, the objective questions. Uh, but it will give you the option to do manual grading. And um, let me actually go to one of my past courses. So um, if I'm, um, Looking at uh, the quizzes, let me just pull up. Um, let me pull up this uh, finding and characterizing extrasolar planets quiz. Um, under in the administration block, when you're looking at the quiz, uh, there is a results category, and um, I won't show you what these look like because it will pull up actual student uh, responses. But if I click on, I think I uh, just see the top of the page here. Um, if um, you, you select that option to see the grades, you can um, see um, for uh, each of your students, on each of their attempts, uh, you know, what, and I, I can only, I'll only show Christine's first name here, um, what, uh, when she took it, uh, when she completed it, how long it took to take it, and what her grade out of 10 was. And you would see that for all of, um, all of the, um, all of the students. You can, um, do uh, the highest grade. Um, anyway, there's also um, where you can see each student's attempt and every answer and whether they got the answer right or wrong. Um, and again, um, here is William and I won't show the last name. But uh, he got a four and a half out of 10. And each of these um, questions that he answered, you can see which ones he got right and which ones he got wrong. OK, so those are those two. Um, if you had uh, a question that had manual grading, you would click on this manual grading. And you would see uh, you would have links to all of the essay questions or all of the um, well, short answer questions, you can actually set those up so that Moodle will automatically grade those. So we're mainly talking about, uh, for example, essay questions. You would see all of your essay questions listed here. You'd be able to click on them, go through all of the responses for the students, and uh, be able to, you know, give the um, 16 out of 20 or 15 out of 20, whatever score you wanted to, to give. You can also, and I have to make sure I'm not going to show any student information here. You can also show the questions that have been graded automatically. And, um, you know, so here would be the list of the, of the question, the multiple choice questions and the true false questions that Moodle graded automatically. And I could click on. So let's say that I decided by after looking at the statistics, which I'll which I'll finish off by showing quickly. Let's say I decided that I had a problem with one of the with one of the questions, and I really need to provide um, either partial or full uh, credit for students who answered B uh, on the on the on the um, on that question. I could go in here and upgrade the grades. And um, you, know, you would see uh, you know, what the student answered, and you could override that. Um, I'll just get out of here quickly. So the manual grading option is good for those questions. You do have to manually grade, but you can also override any automated grading. 
just so if, if Moodle if, if Moodle sees that it's a paragraph question, it is automatically meant to be manually graded. Is that yes? Okay. Because okay. you you really can't give Moodle a, a enough of an exemplar for Moodle right. to grade the yeah yeah okay. Um, good question. Yeah, Paul. One thing I'm dying to know: you have a whole test created already. You have it in Aiken format. You import, you input into your question bank. Can you just add all those questions at once using the add option? Uh, yeah. Well, um, let me go back here. So if uh, if I were editing the quiz, and you've got your 25 questions in a category that you want. You want all of them on here as defined questions. Right. You can go to add questions from the question bank mm -hmm. and select the category. Mm -hmm. What is life? And yeah, there's this little box at the top that Beautiful. is select all. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Perfect. So just quickly back here. Um, the statistics provide, um, uh, so let's say if I run a report over all the attempts, because you know students have up to five attempts on this quiz, uh, there are just a couple of things to point out here. Um, there is a, uh, a statistics that's calculated that will give the internal consistency for, um, for the the quiz that you put together, you want this number to be higher. You you want this number. The higher this number is, the the more it means that um, the questions that you've assembled on this quiz are acting in concert to kind of probe student understanding. Um, what is probably more interesting, and it's a little bit confusing because I mo I have all randomly selected questions, but if I click on view details here, I will see here are all the questions that were randomly pulled out by Moodle when students came to look at the, the to take the quiz. And for this question about exoplanet detection techniques, uh, that question showed up on 13 of the attempts um, that students took. And on average, across all the attempts, uh, students got it right 63% of the time. And this question has a kind of so-so mediocre discrimination index, but it's not bad. This, these values here mean, um, do the students who do well overall on the quiz also tend to do well, also tend to get this question correct? So here, this hot Jupiter's question doesn't really have a, a good discrimination index. In this case, because it was just too easy and almost everybody got it right. So there's really not any correlation between good students getting the question right or not. Um, but here is a question that, um, you know, students only got right half the time, but it showed a very strong correlation. The students who got it right were the ones who went on to do you know really well overall on the course that means that tells me that this this question is functioning well whereas this question here um you know had um a third of the time students got the question right so there is some discrimination between students getting it right and students who didn't get it right but the students who got this question right weren't actually the ones who did better overall on the on the quiz so this would flag this question for me and say well maybe i need to think about rewriting this question if i'm going to use it in the future to make sure that it is um, discriminating a little bit better you, what you really don't want is to have a, uh, a negative value here you don't want to question that the students who do well in the exam are the ones that typically got the question wrong because that really tells you something is uh, um, um, askew with that question so I'll stop sharing there I think we've gone through most of everything again figure out to what extent and how you want to use the quiz activity 
Certainly you can use it for high stakes summative tests at the end or periodically through your course, but you know, keep in mind the opportunities to use it in a formative way as well. Um, I, I didn't used to write, I went for decades without writing any multiple choice questions. And then um, I decided I was going to use the quiz activity in Moodle to make sure that students were engaging with the reading and understanding the reading. And I had to kind of reteach myself how to write multiple choice questions. Um, so there's that. Uh, get your questions put together, either write them in Moodle or import them into Moodle, organize them into your question bank, set up the quiz activities to have the behavior that you want it to have, and then uh, add your questions. Either, like, uh, like I showed with Paul, he's got this set of questions he's importing, he just wants them all on the exam, or do you want to draw a random selection of questions? Lots of opportunities. For the time limits, uh, um, is it possible to, is it for the whole, if you, if you give more than one attempt, is it uh, like 20 minutes every Every attempt, attempt yeah. Okay. So, so you it, cannot um, customize it for each attempt? No, no. So if you've got, let's say you're giving students a two-day window to take this quiz, and you're giving them three attempts. But you don't want them to just leave the quiz open for a day at a time and do you know, all sorts of internet research and so forth. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to give them the multiple attempts over that two-day window. But every time they start an attempt, they only have 20 minutes. And so yeah. you know, it's best for them to actually know the material, take it. If they're spending a lot of time going off looking for answers within this 20-minute time period, mm -hmm. they're going to run out of time. OK. All right. Thank you. Okay. One question, Keith. Um, uh, I think I know the answer, but I wanted to double check with you. If I have a multiple attempt option with randomized questions, uh, will quiz generate every time different set of yes. questions? Yes. So you're, you're, you're saying you're giving them, say, three attempts on the quiz. And you, you're randomly pulling 10 questions from your 28 questions in your quiz category. Every time a quiz is generated, it's going to be a different random set of 10 questions. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and that applies to multiple uh, tests attempts by one student. So yeah, they're going to see different questions. Um, they're going to be in different random orders. The default is for the um, um, potential answers to be shuffled as well. So it makes it very difficult for a student to uh, say, oh, I did, I answered B on question two on the first attempt, I, and I got it wrong, so therefore I need to answer A, C, or D. Well, you know, no. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking, to give them shuffled and randomized, so kind of, uh, you know, yep. to, to yeah. yeah, so you, you can do a lot within Moodle with randomizing the you know, drawing for random questions from a question bank and shuffling answers and, and uh, restricting the time interval to really encourage students to focus on just getting in and taking the test and not, you know, not trying to game the system. Um, but as I said, we do have uh, we do have lockdown browser if there is really a high stakes exam and you want to uh, layer another layer of security on top. So even with this, uh, you know, kind of defined topic, I've I've again ran over time. Uh, thank you for uh, for sticking it out with me. Um, I'll get this recording up onto our website, and I am working on getting the. Um, workshop follow-up emails out to everyone with the links to the recording, the links to the notes, uh, you know, the little um, specification of what workshop you attended and all that. So, um, you know, look for more emails coming out as follow-ups to the workshops that you've all attended. And with that, I will stop recording.